Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little for PokerNews.com. Today we have a hand from a $5,000 buy-in main event that I played recently. Under the gun, a tight aggressive guy makes it 550, and then a 50-year-old player in third position elects to call. Then it folds around to me in the cutoff, and I have ace-queen offsuit. So you can go, well, really two ways here. You can either re-raise or you can call. And I think both plays have merit. The main time to re-raise is when you think that you have a decent amount of preflop fold equity, and you also don't expect to get 4-bet very often unless you are crushed. You don't necessarily want to be 3-betting if you think that you're going to get 4-bet a lot because you have to fold, or you should fold at least. And you're not really trying to play a big pot early in the tournament with ace-queen unless you end up flopping a very good hand. So this is a pretty standard spot to call and see what develops. So hopefully that is what I do. It is. I like that a lot. And we will get to see a flop along with the splashy 40-year-old player in the big blind. Uh, pretty good flop for me. Queen, queen, jack. We have three of a kind. It's always good to flop three of a kind early in the tournament. And then they check around to me. So when they check around to me, what does that say? Well, the tight aggressive guy who raised from early position probably doesn't have much because you would think that if he had a good hand, he probably would bet. Some people do check in this spot with hands like pocket aces and pocket kings, which I think is probably a good play. Just because if you bet and get significant action, you're often not loving this scenario. So I, I don't think we can necessarily eliminate those hands from our opponent's range, but it's just somewhat unlikely just because a lot of players do bet whenever they have any sort of a hand. Um, the other players, they probably don't have much. You would think that they would bet. Well, you would think the 50-year-old player would bet if he had a queen. So I think it's pretty unlikely that player has a queen. Splashy 40-year-old player could have a queen. Um, he could have pretty much his whole range because he's going to check with his entire range on the flop to see what develops. Anyway, when they check around to me, I definitely want to bet. I would bet here with all my draws. I bet here with all my queens. And would we bet with a jack? If I had ace-jack, I'd probably bet king-jack, probably, and then jack-10, I would not bet. So I'm going to have a reasonably strong range when I bet here. I bet 1,500 into the 2,500 pot. There may be some merit just to betting with my whole range here, trying to steal the pot a lot of the time if we're very convinced these two players have nothing or these two players have nothing. So only the 50-year-old guy calls. So when the 50-year-old guy calls, what do we think about his range? Well, it's probably going to be a lot of hands like a jack. And uh, that's that's pretty much it. I mean, he could have the various draws like 10-9, king-10, or, or various spade draws. So I think those certainly exist in his range. But I think the majority of his range is just going to be uh, a bunch of jacks. So when the king comes on the turn, what does that do to our opponent's range? It's typically going to make it weaker. But at the same time... It may improve our opponent if he has a hand like king jack. And also if he did float with the or if he did call with a hand like king ten, he made top pair and he's never gonna fold. So I think here we're not really trying to get value from a jack at this point. We're trying to get value from a king or a hand like queen ten or queen nine, which I think makes some sense. Or um and like Ace Jack, we maybe can get a little bit of value from as well. So I think I would prefer a bigger bet here. That's what that really amounts to. So the range I just said I'm trying to get called by is all pretty decent, right? A king is pretty decent, a queen's pretty decent, and Ace Jack is pretty decent. So I think I should have bet bigger here. This was probably a mistake. I you have to be careful whenever you're figuring out how to size your bet because usually you're either sizing it based on your range and your range is strength. And here, my range should actually be quite strong at this point because I would always check with my jacks here. So if I'm betting, it's going to be with a queen or better or a good draw. So given that's the case, I'd like to bet small because I should have such a big range advantage, right? If I have a queen, my opponent's almost always crushed. If I have a straight, he's almost always crushed. And if I have a draw, well, that fits in nicely. And, but really, there aren't very many draws available. Notice just ace, ten of spades just got there. There's ace, nine of spades, I guess. Um... King, would king anything of spades makes top pair. So uh, there aren't really a ton of draws available at this point. So I think you want to bet small for that reason. Um, however, given the range I'm trying to get called by from my opponent, which is all reasonably strong hands, I think that should lead me to bet larger because those hands that my opponent I'm trying to get called by will likely call a big bet. I'm not trying to get called by Jack-9 here. I think Jack-9 is going to fold to most all bets. So... 
for that reason, I think I want to bet bigger. And usually, if your opponent is not necessarily a great player, I'm not saying this opponent was not a great player, but if you think he's probably not a great player, usually you just want to size your bet based on how you expect them to react with their range. And as you're playing against better players, you want to size your bet based on what your range looks like. So anyway, I bet 2200 I think I probably should have gone a little bit bigger, maybe 4000 or so. Our opponent does call. River's a 9, and my opponent checks. So how do we feel about the 9? Can we extract value here? And I would just venture to say no. If we bet and get called, it's usually going to be by... Well, think about this, right? I just said that our opponent probably has a hand like King-10, which we lose to. A hand like a Queen. Think about the range of Queens, right? It's going to be King-Queen, Queen-Jack, Queen-10, Queen-9. Most people aren't playing Queen-8 versus an under-the-gun raise. So we lose to all the Queens at this point. Lose or chopped all the queen with all the Queens. Um, will a Jack ever call? Well, Ace-Jack is almost certainly going to fold on this river. King-Jack probably is not going to call. Jack-10 is obviously going to call. Jack-9 is going to fold. So it's kind of hard to get action from a jack unless we're beat. And what else is there? I mean, I guess ace-10 is, exists, but we lose to that also. So I don't see any merit in betting. It's a little bit annoying that we flop three of a kind and the board ran out such that we cannot really get value at all. But um, I, I think that's where we are. If the river was a spade, like a low spade, and our opponent checked, I probably would go ahead and value bet because then I think we can get called by top pairs and also worse queens. And that's another spot where I would bet small versus most good players and maybe a little bit bigger versus weaker players. Because again, if a spade comes, just think about my range, right? All the queens are still trips. All the spade draw gets there, spade draws get there to make flushes, so my range should be incredibly strong. But again, I'm trying to get called by a queen or a king, so I can usually bet a little bit on the bigger side. Not necessarily huge, maybe 65% pot or something. Whereas against a good player, you probably want to go much smaller, probably 35% pot, just because there are very few bluffs in my range. Um, anyway... And this spot, I think we have a very easy check. We cannot get called by much of anything. Do not fall into the trap of thinking that you have trips, therefore you must bet. Instead, you want to think, if I bet, what can my opponent call me with? And given what I just outlined, there are very few hands that I actually beat that I can. There are very few hands that I beat that will call me, and, there, and virtually none of the hands that beat me will fold because no one's folding a straight or a full house. Maybe in some world I could go all in to try to get my opponent to fold a straight, but I think that's a little bit silly. So let's just check. We win sometimes and our opponent just has ace-jack or king-jack or jack-nine. But he has queen-ten, interestingly enough. I'm kind of surprised he didn't bet the flop. And um, if he does check call the flop, I think he needs to check call the turn and check call the river like he did. But given we lost his hand, you know, it's not so bad. Luckily, the river wasn't a... The river... Luckily, the turn wasn't a ten, right? Because then if the turn's a ten, we may end up losing a decent amount of money. But uh, it's always frustrating when this happens. Whenever you do lose a pot that you may feel like you deserve to win, just understand you don't deserve to win any hands. And also understand that you're not going to win with your, you know, quote unquote premium hands every single time. Sometimes you just lose. And when that happens, that's nothing to get annoyed or frustrated at. You just have to remain calm and continue playing your best. So that's going to be it for this hand for PokerNews.com. If you enjoyed this, please let them know on Twitter. Definitely post your comments in the comment section, and I will be happy to address them. Thank you very much for watching. Be sure to check back next week for another educational poker hand.